So I used to think that I didn't like scary stories. That is, until last week. Hello booktube, Mo here, and as you may have guessed, I am doing a Halloween recommendations video. Now I definitely did not plan on doing one of these, did not expect to do one of these things, especially as I said at the beginning, I've never been one for scary stories, or at least I didn't think so. I don't read horror novels, I've never really tried them I guess, um, but I sat down to read some poetry the other night and I read a poem that I didn't know and it ended up being kind of creepy but really cool at the same time and I was like, oh that's weird, I don't normally like creepy things. And then I started thinking about all my other favorite poems and I was like, oh yeah, because like in that one, well, in that one everybody dies. In that other one, no, that, that guy gets cursed in that one and then in that one, no, that one everybody dies too. In that other one, no, that one's just really like weird. And then I thought, Wait a minute, <laughs> maybe I don't read horror novels, but I might read horror poetry and short stories and fairy tales <laughs> and other things, so maybe I'll give a horror novel a try one of these days. But I am bringing to you guys today for spooky, eerie Halloween recommendations uh, three poems, three fairy tales, and three short stories. So let's get right into them. Uh, the first poem that I would like to recommend to everybody is Goblin Market by Christina Rossetti. Um, I absolutely love Rossetti, she's one of my favorite poets, and this poem is just really eerie and kind of weird, um, as suggested by the title. There are goblins in it, and it deals with these two girls and their temptations to buy the things that the goblins are selling, even though that they know they shouldn't do it, um, and the consequences of what go on afterwards. Uh, this is not necessarily a short poem, I think it's about 20 pages long, um, but it's just really good, you guys. Uh, the next poem is The Stolen Child by Yeats. This one is the shortest thing on this list, it's like two pages, and it is about a changeling. Um, so if you don't know what a changeling is, in the past when infants would just die in their sleep, which we now know comes from different diseases or disorders or many different reasons. Uh, the story that they told as to why it happened was that the infant didn't really die, but the fairies stole the infant away and replaced it with a non-living duplicate, and that's why your child was gone. And so this poem is about a child who is being kidnapped by the fairies. Uh, and the third poem is the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, and this is by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, who I haven't read much of his stuff yet, but I definitely want to. This poem was awesome, guys. Um, as it says in the title, there is a mariner, so this is mostly an adventure uh, on the ocean, but it has to do with curses and spirits and like dead men walking and there's weird creatures and it's sort of this paranormal, surreal, it's it's awesome guys. You just, you should read it. It's also about 20 pages long, I think, so a little bit of a longer poem, but definitely worth it. Um, on to the fairy tales. So the first fairy tale that I want to recommend is probably the best known of these three, and that would be Bluebeard. Um, if you don't read fairy tales, Bluebeard is about a woman who gets married and her husband leaves for a while and she goes exploring the house and discovers some rather disturbing things and potential dangers. And these are pretty short, actually. The fairy tales are shorter than those two poems I just mentioned. I think this one's like five or seven pages long. So really quick read. Uh, the next fairy tale I want to mention is Mr. Fox. This one has some similar themes to the first one. It also involves um, marriages and murders, um, but is slightly different, and I, what I really enjoy about this one is actually the poetry and the rhymes within the storyline. Um, I just think it makes it even more creepy. And the third fairy tale is Binary, um, and this also involves a murder, um, but more of the story actually happens after the murder has been done rather than discovering what's going on uh, beforehand. Uh, and it involves the 
remains of the dead person and how they end up uh, revealing the story to everyone else. Uh, and those two are like three pages, guys. So if you're thinking maybe I want to try reading a fairy tale, just it doesn't take very long. Go do it. Just go. Uh, and then I have three short stories. So the first of which is by Rudyard Kipling, and it's The Strange Ride of Marby Jukes. Now this short story, like most of Kipling's work, is set in India. And it's about a man who is riding his horse out late at night and can't see very well, and he falls into this pit. And the pit he discovers is actually kind of like a prison and kind of like a tomb. Um, it's where people are put when society just wants to get rid of them, essentially. And so there are other people also stuck down here, and he's trying to survive and trying to escape throughout this story. Um, I would mention that the main character in this is slightly racist. It is something that was common during that period. I think he's more just egotistical than really racist. He just thinks so much better of himself than everybody else, and the rest of them happen to not be the same race as him. I, I don't know. But uh, just so that you know that that's in there. Uh, the next one I would like to recommend is an H.P. Lovecraft short story, and that is The Color Out of Space. And this is the longest one on this list, it's like 35 pages long, but I definitely recommend it, you guys. The villain is a sentient color <laughs> that falls down to Earth in a meteorite, and it's how it affects the area that it landed in and the people who are living there mentally and physically and all of the stuff that goes on. And it's really weird and kind of creepy. So if you haven't read any Lovecraft, this one's great. And the last one is There Will Come Soft Rains by uh, Ray Bradbury. And I don't know if I would call this one horror, but it is really eerie. Um, and the main character in this story is a house. Um, set in the future, obviously, because it's Bradbury and he wrote science fiction. Um, but it's a house that has a lot of computers and other things. Um, working within it, which is what kind of makes it into a character, um, and sort of the demise of this place, and what happened to the people and whatnot who lived in that area. And it's really good, you guys, so hopefully if you've got some time left in your TBR to stick in a short little spooky read for Halloween, you will consider looking at one of these. Um, these are all older, they are all in the public domain, so I will leave links down below if you would like to go read any of them. You can do that. Uh, let me know what your favorite sort of eerie, spooky, short um, piece of fiction is, and if you've read any of these down below, and I will be seeing you guys next time. Happy reading!